Now, when your dog is barking madly for dinner or breakfast or any meal, really, the last thing you might think about is how environmentally friendly their food is. So that might change as dog food made from meat grown in a laboratory goes on sale for the first time. The manufacturer claims the cultivated meat has a lower carbon footprint and could be healthier for your pet. Our climate editor, Justin Rollett, has been finding out more. There are 13 and a half million dogs in the UK. They eat a lot of food, and that food contains a lot of meat. And all that meat has a climate cost. Around about 20% of all the meat that is consumed um, by high pet-owning nations, and that would include the United Kingdom, um, is actually consumed by pets, not people. They've always been focusing on human diets, but actually, pets are a really big part of this picture as well. Cultivated meat is meat grown from animal cells in bioreactors, big fermentation tanks a bit like this. No animals die in the process, but the paste that's produced is chemically at least identical to meat. The manufacturer of the meat in these chicken-based doggy snacks says the process uses 65% less land and involves half the carbon dioxide emissions of traditional meat. So here is the crucial question. What do the dogs think? <laughs> and where better to find out than a cafe in Bristol that caters for our canine companions? So we've got the treats here. It looks like the dogs do like them. Yes, they do. There you go, there you go. What about you, Maud? Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, do you ever worry about Rue's carbon footprint? If I'm honest, I haven't thought about it much, um, but it's something I think we should all be aware of. Me, personally, I wouldn't eat lab-grown meat, so I'm not sure that that would be something that I would necessarily turn to for my dog either. The British Veterinary Association is a bit sceptical too. It told the BBC it wanted more research on the safety and sustainability of cultivated meat. Meatly, which makes the artificial meat, says its product has been approved by all the relevant regulators. Our Meatly chicken is made in an incredibly controlled process. So it is free from any antibiotics, any hormones or steroids. There can be no contamination like E. coli and salmonella that you can get with traditional chicken. And so it is incredibly safe. The first lab-grown burger was created more than a decade ago and was reckoned to have cost £200,000 to produce. The company behind the doggy treats says its breakthrough has been finding ways to grow the meat cells much more cheaply. And it hopes what's good for the dog is good for its owner, that we'll all be eating cultivated meat soon too. Professor Guy Poppy used to be the chief scientific advisor to the UK Food Standards Agency. This offers an opportunity to offer the advantages of meat, but without the carbon and environmental footprint. And some people are concerned about how you keep animals and then how you slaughter them and prepare them to eat. The moral concerns. The moral concerns, that's absolutely right. Let's be honest, dogs aren't the most discerning diners. And if you find the idea of lab-grown meat unappetizing, ask yourself this. If it is safe, tastes the same as the real thing and is cheaper, would you eat it then? Justin Rowlatt, BBC News, Bristol.